Hi, welcome to Monster Transmission. You're in Kurt's Corner. Today we're going to go over how to install a superior reprogramming kit in a Ford C6 transmission. That's the early three speed. Went from 1966 to 1996. So that has a 30 year span of using this product. It's a very versatile transmission. So the reprogramming kit in this unit is very popular. So we're going to go over how to install a reprogramming kit in a C6 transmission valve body. So today we're using the Superior Reprogramming Kit. What I highly recommend is that you actually review the instructions prior to even taking the first bolt off of the valve body. So, and if you notice on these instructions, on one side it has instructions for regular normal duty, it says regular duty. There's upgrades you can do to increase the shift firmness and the timing of the shifts as well as the lubrication to the transmission. So they have a regular kit. On the other side of the instructions, it has for heavy duty, which means like for racing or towing applications or diesel applications. So there's modifications, different modifications on this side of the instructions for the heavy duty. So this is going into an F250. It's a 1978. It's a year of transmission and that's important to know because there are different instructions based on the year of your application. Basically, it's 1976 and earlier, and 77 and newer. So our application is a 77 newer. So we're going to follow the instructions on this side, and we'll start with step one. Step one is to replace the outer pressure regulator valve. We're going to change that spring assembly on the valve body. So the first step we need to do, this is the valve body we're going to be working with. Still dripping fluid from taking it out of the vehicle. So this top component here, this is the lower half of the valve body assembly. We're going to remove these bolts that hold the filter onto the valve body casting. It is a metal filter with a metal screen. So that will be replaced and does not come in a kit. Now all these bolts that we're going to be removing off the transmission, off this valve body I should say, is a 5 16 head. It's okay to use a gun or air gun or electric gun when disassembling, but when we go back together, everything's going to be hand tightened and then torqued down. So we're going to remove the filter bolts first. So that's the old filter. And there was a gas gun underneath. So all these bolts are the same length. So it doesn't matter which order you put them back in. They're all the same length. So now that has exposed more bolts which hold the upper half of the valve body assembly to this bottom plate. Take these four screws out. You notice one bolt here is longer than the other ones. So that bolt was up in this front area here of the valve body next to the boost valve regulator. And we can now invert the valve body over. So there's two screws here, one with the stud for this valve assembly. So we're going to remove those two screws. One has like a stud end on the top of it. That's for the detent rod. Then there's two screws for the valve body itself. There's two different length bolts. So there are springs and check balls in this casting. So before we lift that off, we're going to invert this over so nothing goes falling out of the valve body. Wow, pretty dirty. Now I want you to know that I'm using a magnet. And on the later units, there's a valve ring assembly here. This little stud assembly goes right in this port here in the front of the valve body. In the early units, it actually used a check ball setting there. Then there's the check ball. This will be in the instructions as well on the diagram. They'll show you the locations of the check balls. Now we're going to install, work on installing the actual spring assembly here in this boost valve area. Now to remove this valve assembly, to access this spring, we need to remove this a clip here. And it's just pushed in, it's like a U-clip holding into the channel of this aluminum valve. On the earlier design, like 76 and older, it had this plate with two screws on it. So if you have an older valve body, you'll have two, two screws here to, re to remove that valve out. The later design, like this one's 78, which is anything newer than 77, will have this design. So we're simply just going to remove this clip, you just basically lift up on it, and it's wrapped around that valve assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash this up some to get some of that debris out. 
to make it easier to remove that valve assembly out of the valve body. Okay, now I got the valve body all clean to make it easier to get this valve assembly out of the bore. So we take the boost valve out. There's a spring, actually two springs. So this is the order of the boost valve circuit. It's also in the diagram, in the chart here, this is the area that we're working. Again, it goes over the early design with the plate and the later design with the clip. So if you follow instruction one, it says replace the spring with the orange spring supplied in the kit. Then there's different sets of springs what are using a normal duty or the heavy duty application. So we're following the heavy duty, so you're gonna have more springs than actually what you're gonna use because there's different springs for different applications. So we're gonna be installing the orange spring that's supplied. So we're gonna replace it with the old black one. You discard the black one. This one's a little bit taller than that one. You notice there's a shaft here. This actually fits for the spring. It actually goes in into the bore, that mechanism with the spring, and this other spring goes on the outside of this. Ensure that these components are clean. So we're gonna slide this valve in first. The shank faces out. Then we will put this plate on. This will go down into the bore and onto that assembly. Like so, then you're gonna install the factory black spring in the center, the smaller one, the orange spring, and install it next into the bore. And now you're gonna reinstall this valve back into the boost sleeve itself. So we're gonna lubricate this a little bit. A little trans shell to hold it in place. And this should go all the way down inside the bore. Now that will slide right back into this channel. So you're gonna push that down, and wh where you wanna push it, this channel here will get pushed in all the way down to this area. And then this clip, this little U-clip, will be reinstalled into that channel. So now the boost valve is done, obviously you wanna check it afterwards. You apply pressure to the back of the valve, and the springs should push it back. Now if you follow the instructions, you're actually gonna remove this long plate here, same size we were using earlier, and all these screws are the same length except for the one in the center. There is a little bit of spring tension on it from the springs and valve pushing against the plate, so make sure you hold pressure on it so it doesn't come springing off or flying off and then you lose your screws. If you notice, there's oil channels on the back side of this plate. That's to move the oil to the next valve assembly through this plate as well, as well as through the channels on the actual casting. What I recommend you do is you turn this valve body to the same position as your instructions. So you can follow these instructions on which valve. Now you don't only have to replace a couple of springs. So there's no need besides checking and cleaning the other valves to even remove them. But we're gonna go over one valve train at a time to go over every valve in the valve body on this, even though we're not installing a shift kit on every valve. So we'll start with the first valve at the top, and that's called a cutback valve. So we're gonna remove that valve. And if you notice, there's no spring, there's no other check balls, there's nothing besides this valve. But in the reprogramming kit, it comes with a spring. And it's spring number four. So if you follow the instructions, it says install black spring provided. So in the kit, there's a little tiny black spring. And this black spring will go behind this valve. So you're gonna put this into the bore first and then put the valve on top of it. And it also warns you in, in the instructions that if the spring is too tall, because of different length valves, you may have to grind it down a coil or so. So that's actually what we had to do on this one. I've grounded down one coil. You install that into the casting. Then the smaller part of the valve goes in first. So install this valve train in, and it is right even with the, the cover. So that's valve train is done. If you have any further questions on any of our kits or parts, feel free to call us here at Monster, 1-800-708-0087, and we'll talk to you then.